Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stale Popcorn Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen, and with me as always is my co-host, Christopher. Say hello to the people, Chris. Hello, people. How are you doing? They can't answer back, but I assume they're doing well. Good to hear. So, uh, there's a movie coming out soon, and it's called Argyle. And to hop on the uh, the SEO train, we thought we would review another movie that was directed by our very own Matthew Vaughn. Um, Matthew Vaughn, uh, as made famous from his movies like X-Men First Class and uh, the Kingsman series. So we thought we would uh, review a movie maybe lesser known to that extent. Um, and that movie is 2007's Stardust. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of this little movie here for you. And then we can kind of go through and and uh, see what we each other thought of it, if that's okay. Is that okay if we do that, Chris? You know, I think that's okay, but uh, as long as the audience consents, I'm okay with it. All right. Well, I, I, think, it's, I think they'll consent. I think it's pretty good. All right. So <clears throat> to make a two and a half hour long story short, I'll just kind of scrunch it down into a few minutes here. So this movie is uh, all centered around my boy, Charlie Cox. And if you're not familiar with Charlie Cox, he is made famous by the uh, Marvel TV show Daredevil. We got Daredevil here. And uh, there's a lot of backstory going through. There's uh, uh, his dad. I don't even know how to start, man. <laughs> I mean, just, start off just thinking about this, there's like so much. Like the first 20 minutes is like just like backstory. Um, so his dad, it, it takes place way back when, you know, and, uh, his dad goes, I do I need to start over. Jeez. How it, his I dad know, goes man. what? <laughs> you okay. got Dorian Gray. Hey, yeah. you got, you got Dorian Gray who, uh, he's just living at this sheltered little life and he, uh, no one in the city called wall can go beyond the wall. No one knows why, but one day he does. he, but tricks a, a senile old man and, yep. and goes behind. Did you there recognize and, that senile old man? I did. Was it? I was thinking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Were it you? was. That's yeah. what I was thinking. At least Grandpa, that doddering old fool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Dorian Gray goes behind the wall and uh, finds a whole nother world. It's like a world of magic and fairy tales. And but he meets a young lass who uh, just beds him right away. Just uh, really, really hops on that like she's never seen a man before. Nine months later, out comes a baby, and uh, the the woman can't go past the wall into his normal realm, so she drops that baby off. And then, uh, eighteen years later, out comes our old man Charlie Cox. He's eighteen years old and wants to uh, pursue the heart of uh, a one Victoria. And so they're they're talking, and and he said, "I'd do anything for you," you know, and. Uh, really simping, hardcore. I, I don't think I've seen this level of simping pre-2012, you know, in any other movie. But uh, as they're talking one night, a star falls down, and he says, I'm going to I'm gonna go get that star for you. And she said, okay, well, you know, you dickhead. Like, I'll, <laughs> I'll go get that for you and, uh, and make you my wife. And then while that's going on, um, there's two or three other tandem stories. There's witches who played by Michelle Pfeiffer and, and others who were not recognizable, witches who see the star falling and they're after the star because, uh, it grants them beauty and life if they eat it. And, uh, and then there's a kingdom who, uh, I'm doing a bad job of explaining this. Aren't I? <laughs> no, I'm with you all. You keep there's, going. Um, so in the magical kingdom, there's a, there's a king who has seven sons and they're all kind of waiting for this old man to die so that they can take the place of a king of the new king, you know, as the new king. And as his dying wish, the father has a, an amulet on his necklace and he, mind you, this is a fairy tale. So, you know, normal logics be damned. He throws the stone out the window and the stone actually flies out and hits the star. And that's what causes the star to fall and fall down to the earth. And the king says, whoever catches that star brings it back, or not to the star, catches a stone and brings it back, gets to be the king. So all kinds of hijinks ensue. You got Charlie Cox after the star to bring it back to his be beloved Victoria. And then he got the witches after the star to uh, eat it and, you know, 
gain beauty and eternal life. And then you have all these different princes um, after the star to uh, to claim the, claim their uh, their kinghood. So yeah, there's a lot that goes on there. That's just the setup, man. I, I forgot how long this movie was. Maybe I'm not used to it, but this was like a two and a half, maybe. I don't know how long it was, but uh, with that really it's rough. It's an hour and dr- 28 minutes. No, it is not. Is it really? No, it's two hours and seven Sorry, minutes. sorry. 128 minutes. Okay. I was like, <laughs> surely you just. If it was <laughs> one minute shorter, it could have been the prequel to 127 hours. <laughs> um, but with that long drawn out uh, synopsis of the story, uh, what did you think of it overall? Well, I had seen this movie once when it came out. Last time I saw it, my family uh, rented it from a red box, if that tells you oh, wow, yeah. the time period. So I think it was probably about 2008 whenever it went to DVD. Yeah. And I remember as a 13, 14-year-old boy thinking the movie was kind of silly. I wasn't into it. So I I uh, I didn't have super high expectations coming in, but uh, you know it's one of those rare movies. I I tell to my wife, hey, we're uh, we're gonna talk about Stardust, and she's, oh, I love that movie. Let's watch it. <laughs> so we watched it together, and uh, it's it's pretty good watch. I thought I thought it was uh, pretty good, and in particular, it's a good film to watch with a significant other if you will Mm. now um i'll go into more details later on but is it something i would probably put on myself and you know try and dissect all the cinematography and the plot and all that probably not but it's a it's a nice uh feel good kind of a little cheesy but you know I like a little cheese here, and uh, yeah. I think overall it's got a good... I like the fantasy. Uh, I think it had some pretty funny parts. Um, there was, was a couple of times I, I, yeah. I, I chuckled out loud, uh, lots of uh, little giggles here and there, but overall, I, I enjoyed it. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Again, I wouldn't voluntarily watch it. I thought it would just be a, a nice callback, and I'd seen so many other Matthew Vaughn movies, but I was like, I remember this one being, you know, somewhat good. So I'm glad we watched it again. I, my wife watched it for the first time. And um, something she noticed that I didn't notice the first time was um, my boy Henry Cavill is in there. Patron saint oh, of the podcast, yes. Henry Cavill. I have in my notes here, could have gone my whole life without seeing blonde <laughs> Henry Cavill. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like... Uh... If Tom Cruise from Interview with a Vampire <laughs> had sex with Wesley from uh, Princess Bride and they had a love child, that was kind of how he looks to me. Yeah, it's very unsettling. I did not enjoy that at all. But it's funny to see how just how far we've come. How he was a backup, you know, very minor character, but now he's a he's a big old man. Yeah, man this star, movie you know? had a lot of. Uh, a lot, a lot of, of stars. W- stars. Would you classify as star studded? I would say. I mean, I would too. You got uh, obviously your main ones, but then randomly you get Ricky Gervais there. You got Henry, as you said. Um, you got uh, unknown <laughs> someone else. P- Peter O'Toole, uh, who I recognize his voice only as he's the old um, king. As he was talking, I was like, I know that voice from somewhere. Um, he's the. Anton uh, from Pixar. Oh, what's Anton? It Ratatouille. You remember? Oh. Him? He's the re- f- food review critic guy. Oh, I see. Uh, it's got Ian McKellen as the narr- narrator. That's true. Robert D. Nero. Uh, someone accidentally left Ian McKellen in the narrator studio for X Men 3. That's probably why. <laughs> like, hey, Ian, since you're here, do you mind doing this? Do you want to do this? I think, one of, I, I think it has Prince Charming. One of the, That's who it was. Yep, I heard that. I was voice. like, I, was I recognize like, this voice, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was Prince Charming from Shrek. Yep, it's got uh, Mark Strong as one of the main brothers. Uh, yeah, it's got a good, good, solid cast. Uh, Jason Fleming. I don't know if you know who that is. He's one of the brothers. He's in the uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But uh, who is he in that? He's Doctor Doctor Hyde. Yeah, or... yeah. 
Yeah. Or, yeah, whatever. Jekyll um, and Hyde. Well, the thing I like about these, like, early or mid-2000s is you'll just, you'll watch it, and then you'll just randomly see a bunch of, like, famous people, but they're in it, like, for a, like a Henry Cavill, you know? Mm-hmm. It's always enjoyable um, just because you see these random people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think going back to uh, It's Funnier Than I Remember, there's a scene starting off there after the king kind of puts every all of his sons on this quest. They're all trying to kill each other. And um, it's it's so weird and random. It's This movie is very unapologetic because during that scene, there were originally seven brothers, but I think four of them died because all the other brothers killed them um, in nefarious ways. And so you see the ghosts of of the other brothers, but they're still how they died. So some of them have like squished faces. Some of them are burned, you know, a very, very tongue in cheek there. But there's a scene where one of the brothers congregates with uh, uh, like a priest or something, and he he's going to give a toast and the other two brothers come and, and they all drink. And one of the brothers um, kind of starts choking and keels over and dies. And then Mark Strong looks at him and he's all, did you poison me? You know, and he chokes and everything. And he's like keeling over and dying. And then, uh, he just gets a little chuckle. It's just a joke, just a little trick he played on his brother. I thought it was pretty funny. It was just that a was little, pretty f- oh, uh, well over again. I knew he wasn't. I was like, it's Mark Strong. He's not gonna die right here. Also, oh, yeah. have you ever seen Mark Strong with hair before? That was my first time that was seeing unsettling. it. Unsettling, yeah. Yeah, it was. A, it was unsettling. Again, I could have gone without seeing Henry, blonde Henry, and hair full of Mark Strong. I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those just things to... are gonna come after my dreams. I tell you. It's like seeing Brad Pitt and uh, Troy with his blonde, like the long hair. Like, I don't know, something about it just, it doesn't feel right with me. Yeah. My, my mind goes to uh, um, Jurassic Park where your scientists were so preoccupied with what you could do. You didn't ask and think about whether or not you should. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Um, yeah, no, I liked it. It was pretty good. Uh, I have a few notes here. Um, they did my boy Charlie Cox wrong making him look like the biggest square in the whole city. <laughs> like got that ugly in the beginning. Boy. Yeah, he just, he looks yeah. like such a dork, even though, you know, he's he's really grown into his own as an actor, but this must have been one of his earlier roles because he, he's a poster boy for virgin, you know, celibacy. Well, I think guy it, the wet plot went up soon. in their defense. Let me just defend the, the let me defend oh, God, Matthew okay. here. All right. The plot wouldn't make like if he's a strapling hot guy, he's not gonna chase after a star to get some girl that doesn't really like him to marry. That's him. true. Like that's that's, true. that's something a virgin. Like this is their one shot here of getting a the attractive wife here. Like they'll go ends of the earth here. Yeah, there's a part in it I thought was really funny when he first ru- first runs into the star. Um, he has a wishing candle and it transports him to the star. It's a whole thing. Um, but he runs into what the star is actually a person, by the way, Claire Danes. It's not like a lump of stone or anything because it's, um, it's a magical fairy tale, whatever. I don't give a care. Anyway, he runs into her and immediately he's like, where's the star? I got to get this star. Holy, I know you got the star. And, uh, she's like, I'm the star, you big dumb idiot. And it doesn't pass his mind that that's, a reality he's just like oh okay yeah i'll come with me and he <laughs> just comes, <laughs> just wraps her up ties her up and says come with me and she's like what the heck you dick like <laughs> yeah he doesn't second guess it at all even though he's not <laughs> privy to the like the magical world and the other side yeah this so seems like one funny. of those like you know how people like they're you know the new snow white they're like it's or sleeping beauty it's all you know people are like that's creepy this guy you know uh kissing someone oh, yeah. sleeping like you could make that case for this movie because he just kidnaps her, mm-hmm. obviously without her consent, and just like first thing he does, ties a rope, drags her along, and he's gonna give her like a slave, like give her away, <laughs> you know? Like what's the? Uh... Yeah, she even is like, yeah, that's gonna look real great. You giving me to, as a gift to another person, you freaking idiot! <laughs> like, <laughs> like even though she doesn't understand like the world culture, she's like, okay, you big dumb moron. Yeah. Like, <laughs> He doesn't think it through, but and what? Just... Another question I have. So they have, uh, they have basically the two. They have the magic world that you have to go through the wall, little portal, crack in the wall thing, and then on the other side is 
just London or whatever their mm -hmm. human life. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's never been on this magic side, but he like he doesn't seem shocked by anything. Like <laughs> like he he's teleports through that. a candle. He yeah. he's literally tied a rope to a star, a shooting star. He's there's these witches like. He never bats an eye once, it seems like. Yeah. He's just blinded by that love, man. Just I guess. Just had his heart set on one thing and doesn't care who or what is in his way. Fair enough. I, I totally forgot that Robert De Niro was in this, by the way. Um, he's on the posters, but um, what do you think about him in there? You know, the... I I thought it was kind of funny, not going to lie. I, th I had a couple yeah. chuckles. Um, there's some trivia that I'll share with you later about that, but... Uh, so it got me thinking. It opens up with Ian McKellen. Sure. The McKellen or McClellan? It's Kellen, I right? It was McKellen. Yeah. Yeah. Ian McKellen doing the narrator. Mm -hmm. And all of the good narrators are dying off or soon to die, right? Mm -hmm. You got Morgan Freeman, he's 127. You got, <laughs> you know, uh, Patrick Stewart, is he even alive anymore? Uh, yeah, Christopher so. Lee. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I would just pose a question to you. Who do you think is going to be the next generation of narrators with that nice, Ooh, it's deep, have a nice soothing I don't know, voice? Honestly, uh, Justin Roiland. He got canceled recently, but he, he can do voices <laughs> just I Just doing that. Bring <laughs> oh, back geez, Michael <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah, um, I was thinking... Uh, or you could say oh, yours if no, you no, have No, no, go ahead. I was going to go into trivia, so you can do yours. Oh. Well, I was thinking Idris Elba. He's got a nice, soothing voice. And Idris also... Elba. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heimdall. Or um, Keith David. I mean, they're... Who the gypsy is Keith David? You know Keith David. Is he in Community? Yeah, the black guy from Community. Oh, okay. Leroy. A Leroy. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, Maybe a Matthew McConaughey. I mean, he's got a nice... <laughs> just just thinking of the future, I'm putting this out there in 20 years, come back, we'll see if these are the the new newer narrators. I don't think movies are really narrated that much anymore. Yeah, but, you know, once every... Once every, yeah. Four. I get, most good movies got a nice narrator. You got to yeah. admit. Chris, I got some trivia for us here about sure. Stardust. So, uh... I've read through some of these. I'll just go through them. Ben yeah, Barnes, a.k.a. Uh, Prince Caspian, young Dustin Thorne, yeah, was a fan Dory. favorite and preferred choice for Tristan over Charlie Cox, as he would considered more attractive. Matthew Vaughn intentionally cast the, uh, uh, the then unknown Charlie yeah. Cox over big name actors like Orlando Bloom, as he wanted an actor who could play a dork and easily transition to a suave and handsome gentleman. Do you think he achieves that transition? Well, he does. He I does. mean, it starts off because it starts off Ben Barnes. He's uh, handsome. He's, you know. He's Dorian he, Gray. He's Dorian Gray. He's a very attractive, handsome man. And then, you know, 18 years later, you got this dweeb looking. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> this real he looks ugly. Mixture. Obviously, I already went over the plot. But then when uh, Robert De Niro, spoiler, he's a. Uh, a feminine man, most mm. likely a homosexual. He uh, not that does there's the, anything wrong with that. Not that there's any. He does a he's all that with. Uh, <laughs> he with, does uh, do a he's all that with that. <laughs> Charlie Cox at the end, and then he he puts on a wig, or how does he make his hair longer? I is he wearing a wig the rest of the time? I'm I'm no joke. There's a cut where Robert De Niro's cutting his hair. It turns to. Uh, Claire Danes and it cuts back and he's got shoulder length hair. Yeah. There's no explanation for it. It comes out of I thought it nowhere. was a wig but no. <laughs> he wears it the rest of the like <laughs> I can get the wig to try and like because his crewmates it's supposed to be someone else who's trying to trick him and make him think it's his nephew but yeah, if that's the case what he still wears the wig the rest of the movie. You'd think like on the road he'd probably take off the wig but I just chalk it up to it's magic. It's ma all right. It's, it's one of those magic. things where this movie's unapologetic and it's like he's got long hair now. Piss off! Like he, yeah. <laughs> we don't have to explain every but little thing. You know, once he has the long hair and he's dolled up, he looks 
attractive. He it looks, looks a lot good. like uh, Dorian Gray, uh, Ben Barnes, yeah. if you will. Yeah, no, definitely. Another trivia here, Robert De Niro accepted the role due to his regret at turning down the role of Barbosa in Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the, Curse of the Black Pearl. Well, so that would have been in an alternate universe. Robert De Niro as Barbosa would have been interesting, but I can see his agent just sitting in the room. Robert De Niro saying, "If there's anything that says pirate ship, you come to me, yeah. okay? <laughs> anything." And he comes up to us, "That's good. I'll do it. Whatever it is." And then he, he accidentally found himself <laughs> doing this. He's movie. like, "I got to dance in a dress while staring <laughs> at him, staring at myself in the mirror." Well, Mark Strong gives me angry eyes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's good stuff. Um, uh, Terry Gillum was offered the directing job. He had just fi- just finished the Brothers Grimm and wanted a break from fairy tales. It does give that Brothers Grimm kind of vibe. That's I'd another this... movie I don't hate. Actually, I mean, it's yeah, been me either. Seventeen that's... years since I've seen it, but I remember enjoying it. Yeah, I, that falls into the same camp as this movie. It kind of like mid early 2000s like kind of fairy tale stuff like your golden compass that's not fairy tales but your ink heart your brother's grandma lot kind of stuff good stuff yeah yeah it's one put it on in 10 years i'll enjoy i don't really need to watch it between Mm -hmm. that but there's there's there could be worse films you know yeah nathaniel parker older Dustin Thorne, and Ben Barnes, young Dustin Thorne, played father and son in the Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Really? Yeah. Fun fact. He's Ooh, this Prince one's Caspian's good. dad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Prince uh, Caspian. I forgot he was in the third one. Those, they get real unforgettable real quick. <laughs> Those yeah, movies. <laughs> uh, unforgettable, huh? Um, Anne Hathaway, Scarlett Johansson, Sarah Michelle Geller and Jessica Alba all turned down the role of Yvain, the one uh, Claire Danes played. I don't know, the, the star. The I star, thought for yeah. the first 30 minutes that was Fleur Delacour from Harry Bro, Potter. I, I thought the other girl actually was Fleur, Victoria, um, who oh, Charlie was simping after. Yeah. Um, I Okay, it took me a while to realize what was so, what was to me somewhat unsettling about Claire Danes' character in that movie, or in this movie, um, she ain't got no eyebrows, or they're very uh, pale. And I was like, when I was looking at her, I was like, this is there's something off about her. And she ain't got no eyebrows. I don't know if you noticed that. Maybe I, she does. Maybe they're pale, but it was it made me squirm a little bit. Yeah, I, I didn't notice, but uh, a lot of people with blonde, like especially bright blonde hair, you never really look at their eyebrows, and then the one, like, when you do, you're just, like, staring at them, because you, <laughs> you never really see, you know, yeah. blonde eyebrows. But The casting director was all about that Aryan race, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller was originally offered the role of Yvain, but turned it down to spend more time with her husband, Freddie Prince Jr. Oh, isn't that wow, sweet? That's, uh, now, that's the <laughs> true romance right there. That's that's where love cannot break, right there. <laughs> they met on the set of uh, Scooby Doo, am I right? Uh, I didn't even know like they were a so. couple. But... Yeah, the Fred and uh, Daphne. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I knew they were in Scooby Doo. I didn't know that they were uh, an item, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least one good thing came out of that movie. Yeah. Sidebar Let's see here. That movie, <laughs> I saw it, and uh, I saw it in theaters. As a kid at someone's birthday party, as like a seven year old. And, uh, you know, as a seven year old, you're hooting and hollering, thinking that's the best movie. And it came out on DVD, and I convinced my mom, I said, Oh, this movie is so good. And she, uh, she bought it and she invited my cousins over, a whole family. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen it recently or it's Scooby Doo. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of adult innuendos, as because <laughs> I believe Sean Gunn was a writer, so it's oh, like a hidden go. messages. As a, me as a seven year old, I'm not getting this, but uh, pre remember Sean Gunn innuendos. <laughs> yes, and if you want, there's some pretty. If you just like go on YouTube and type in uh, Scooby Doo adult jokes or whatever, like there's compilations. Anyways, uh, we watched this and invited you know her friends and family and 
it did not go over well with my mother and she pretty sure she ran back to Costco, <laughs> demanded her money back. But I remember getting like a 40 minute lecture of how embarrassed she was and that, uh, she would allow that I would recommend such filth and that I embarrassed her in front of her family by showing it. And there's demons in our house. You know how it is. You, you bring dishonor on the your family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man, and the next funny. thing you know, I'm, you know, I'm out in the rain. I'm letting my reflection show. Uh, you, you know how it is. <laughs> oh man, that's that's funny stuff right there. Um, oh, something that that I just remembered. Um, and this is a part of the trivia. The princes, when killed, are shown to bleed blue blood. This is a joke hinting at their nobility, as those of royal heritage were just said, said to have blue blood in their veins rather than red. As the princes are of royal heritage, they are literally blue bloods. This may also have followed the film, filmmakers to depict greater violence on screen while maintaining a lower age appropriate rating. Yeah. I yeah, that, that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. <laughs> a blue, yeah. Well, I thought about it. I was like, this seems like uh, they. Because if it was red, that probably wouldn't be PG-13 with like a slit throat and blood like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did, I mean, not to toot my own horn, I kind of was like, I wonder if this is because they're blue bloods. And, and uh, mm-hmm. apparently Oh, I so you right. knew it. You Okay, you're pretty to shot that information. In the, not shot in the dark. I, I don't honestly know what blue blood means besides in sports. They call like the all-time great teams, like the... Dukes and the North Carolina, they're blue bloods. So I assume it's like a royalty. They're back founders type thing. Interesting. No, I, I had not known that. If you haven't seen Stardust, go watch it. If you have, let us know what you think in the comments. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing Argyle next week, another movie by a Matthew Vaughn. Tell you guys how that goes as well. So if you listen this far, thanks for listening. And consider subscribing and uh, giving us a like and turn on that bell on icon for notifications. Anything else, Chris? All right. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.